We are now really excited to introduce our first guest speaker, Dr. Chung from the University of Washington and the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, his research interests include micro and nanoscale manufacturing, molecular manipulation, and low-cost disease diagnostics. So please welcome Dr. Chung to the floor. Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Jay Chung at uh, University of Washington. Uh, today, I want to introduce uh, microscale and nanoscale technology and then one of my research topics, a, a DNA extraction uh, device. So, when I was young, uh, I thought about a small scale of devices, how to make it. Okay? Let's, let's think of uh, uh, this uh, nanoscale fish. I think uh, you know of uh, inner space. And if we have this type of a small, small like a device, then we can cure diseases, and also we can deliver drugs for disease uh, diagnosis or disease cure. So lots of uh, uh, good applications. So now, in order to move on to this, then we need to think of a potential energy source. What kind of energy is available? Okay. Then here. Uh, we have abundance of glucose in our body, and then this uh, small-scale device can move with uh, uh, these uh, small molecules. Okay? Then these chemicals should be converted into uh, electrical energy through a nanoparticles. Okay? Then also we need to think of actuation mechanism. How does this uh, small device actuate? Uh, right? How it can move? Right? With what kind of mechanism? We can think of various uh, forces to move on to this in a viscous fluid like a blood. Okay. Then the next problem is uh, how many of them? Right? We need a bunch of them to carry out drugs. Right? And then I'm trying to realize my dream and then the your studies of uh, education for science and attention for science and technology is very crucial. Okay. Then what is a micro scale and narrow scale? Microscale, in comparison to uh, our uh, size, like a middle size, we go down to end. It's about a millimeter scale, about a thousand times. End is tiny, right? Very small. And then, if we get down uh, ten times more, then we have a hair. The diameter of hair is about a hundred micron. And if you get down more, then uh, from here we cannot see anything. We need to see through uh, microscopes and then electron uh, microscopes. Under this, we have cells, bacteria, and viral particles. And under one nanometer, we have uh, atom and electrons. Okay. So we want to manipulate the very tiny things in order to move things out of the device. Then I want to have uh, give uh, one example. What can be so different? in small scale, okay? In large scale, the mass is really dominant. We are affected by gravity, right? However, uh, in small scale, mass is very negligible. Instead, surface tension is really large in small scale. However, surface tension is negligible in large scale. Okay? I want to give you an example. So here is a, a small insect, okay? If you see this, then you know it's not a simple insect. It can float on water because mass is small, and then the legs they do not like water. Okay, so the repulsive force from the water it can make it float. Then the mass is a, a mass is a, a really small in this scale, and then surface tension is a dominant that make it float. Another example is. I think it, you have seen this movie, right? Ant. And if you see this ant, then you know it's trapped in a small water drop. Surface tension is really huge, so it's trapped and then it cannot come out. But if you do the swimming in a pool, then it's easy to get out, right? Mm -hmm. Because your mass is dominant and the surface tension is small. Okay? So I'm uh, working on this uh, small scale of 
field. Then, did you see any of your micro scale devices? No? Okay, probably not. Right? Uh, so, I can give you some of the examples. Here is an inset cleaner. Okay? They are using tiny well, and then they can be heated up very quickly because of the small volume. And then, those tiny liquid drops can be expanded very quickly because it's small. Then, the small water drop can be shot to the, to the paper and then we can draw figures. Okay. Here is another example. Uh, if you see this screen, okay, then it's made of uh, billions of meters, small meters uh, in the uh, projector. Okay. In 1990s, to have uh, this one projector, it was about $10,000. But now it's about $500 then you can buy this. And billions of meters, they are actually one by one. And then they are used to combine three colors, red, blue, and green. Then we can make these colors with lots of meters. So if you see the screen, then we will see tiny meters. Okay, yeah, let's have a one second to prove that. Okay. Can you come on? Can you come here? So what's your name? Jacob. Jacob, okay. Let's see. Can you see the tiny meters and then yeah. the grid? Right? Yeah. Jacob proved that. <laughs> so millions of meters, they are working to uh, make this uh, small screen. Okay. And also, if you see these uh, kind of game tools, then they are made of a bunch of sensors to measure acceleration and also rotation. The small sensors, it was really expensive. All days, it was thousand dollars. But now, it's only like a dollar or two dollars. Okay, instead, through the benefit, we can play with uh, these small remote comps and then uh, uh, play with a uh, uh, friend. Right? Mm -hmm. And how about uh, small scale, nano scale devices? Did you see any of these? But most of you have the device. So, if you see, uh, uh, like smartphones, okay, small chips, they are made in nanoscale, okay. Instead, through the benefit, huge computer, they are packaged into a small device, okay. And in our body, we have those small devices. Stereocilia or cilia in our body, okay, they are actuated to small molecules. If you see the motion, then those small hairs, they are used to transport food and also that helps digestion. Okay. And also we can make similar devices. Okay. So they are actually to transport food and mix fluid. Then you know, uh, here at this point I want to introduce uh, one of my first topics. Uh, DNA extraction device using tips. Let's see how we can utilize the small scale technology to get a benefit. DNA extraction is important for disease diagnosis and also genome sequencing and all other purposes. However, those DNA extraction from our body fluid is very difficult. Okay? It takes about 30 minutes. And also the process is very cumbersome and then challenging. So we have a, a human sample over here, like a blood or saliva. Then now, in order to extract, right, we want to pick up the hair of this person. However, you can grab many of them. Okay? Sometimes you can take off the head, or you can take off a hair from other person. Right? Mm -hmm. So what we develop is a very tiny tip, tiny needle, to extract DNA from human sample. Then, we put the tip into the solution and then apply an electric field to attract DNA to the tip surface. Then, after that, we can withdraw the tip, then concentrate, extract DNA out of the solution. Okay. So, invest, we investigate uh, this science and then we had a practice whether it works or not. 
So this tiny tip, this tiny tip is in nanoscale, and then uh, it will be probed into a solution with an uh, electric potential. Okay? Then we can attract DNA from there, and then we will withdraw it, and let's see if we can uh, attract DNA onto the surface. So now the tip is probed into the solution. And then we will wait about 30 minutes until DNA is attracted to the tip surface. Then after a minute, we will do the tip. Then you will see tiny hair at the end. Can you see that? Yeah, oh, that's the end. So what this means is, if you speak on the floor, then I can identify you in five minutes. <laughs> that's the function of this. So then, you know, we have various tools, small-scale tools, to identify the DNA. So if you use an intercalating dye, then all the DNA will be colored with the green. Okay. The left one is an optical microscope image, and also we can use the electron microscopes to visualize those. And the device was built up by undergrad students in the mechanical engineering department. And then they worked for about one year to make the device. And then tiny tip is uh, held at the end of the device. And then it will jump in to the small well. And then it will concentrate DNA for about one minute. And then it will, it will be withdrawn. Then that's the uh, purified DNA. So it was a capstone design project. And also we made a lot of this. Of course, you know, massive production is advantage of small-scale technology. We process uh, this wafer as a 25 as one batch. And then each batch can make about uh, 500 tips. Okay, so in one batch, we can have tens, uh, tens of thousands of uh, tips. Okay, that will make low cost. And then they are installed in a small coupon. And then if we zoom in this part, then those are the small scale tips. And then if we use uh, electron microscopes, and we can see those tiny tips, they have a weight, right? So it can generate a lot of high uh, electric uh, field strength. Then actual device, it was made uh, with our collaborator, industrial collaborator, nanopacture in Tiana. And then uh, you will see those uh, tips. They are installed at the end. And this is a small well to hold a sample body. And then uh, if we press uh, this button, then uh, the device will extract uh, DNA from there. So this is uh, from the science to the technology and then uh, to the uh, commercialization. So all of this work was done, not by me, okay? So all of the like, uh, students, undergraduate and graduate students, and also uh, two companies, Nanofacture and Kano, and also uh, in the industrial design faculty, uh, Simon An, uh, he helped to design the device. And also, uh, National Science Foundation and then uh, National Institute of Health, uh, they helped out. And the uh, IP uh, was uh, protected and then uh, developed by the University of Washington uh, Center for Commercialization. They are handling the IPs. Do you have any questions for my talk? Okay, thank you so much.